Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this morning here to participate in our Book Direct uh, webinar series. And uh, I can't tell you how thrilled I was to see how many of you registered literally overnight to attend, and uh, as this is such an important topic. And before we start today's session, um, my name is Janice Hurley, and I'm the general manager of b, &B Finder. And um, I wanted to share with all of you that we are dedicating today's webinar uh, to the memory of Mary White. And for those of you who have known Mary, um, you know how important she was to the industry. Not only was she the founder and CEO of b, &B Finder, which she started in 1998, um, and now I have the honor of carrying on her legacy with b, &B Finder. Um, she was also just an incredible woman and friend to so many of us in the industry. And um, Lisa, myself, and Linda Hayes of the team had come together at the Pi Conference, which we had uh, at the beginning of January, and we're talking about Mary and everything that she's done for the industry and decided that we wanted to be able to honor her and put together a scholarship that we were to present at the IHP conference, uh, which was last week in New Mexico. So we were able to start working on that early in January and put it together and with Mary's input and decision on what she wanted to have the scholarship dedicated to. And uh, Mary chose the Mary White Educational Scholarship Fund to be established in honor of Mary to dedicate to the innkeeping industry and specifically to nurturing of those interested in this industry and seeking education as aspiring innkeepers. So how fitting today that we're coming together to educate and to continue educating each other on the changes in the industry. And um, I just wanted to share just a little bit before we get started about um, some of the things that we shared during the announcement for those of you who weren't there at the AIHP conference. And um, as Linda shared that, you know, little did she know 12 years ago that contributing to the Inkeeping for Dummies book authored by Mary White would lead to an everlasting friendship for her and so many of us in our industry. Mary inspired all of us with her wisdom and industry perspectives, having created b, &B Finder as a true industry directory. Lisa and Linda have enjoyed many Dairy Queen blizzards with Mary, and now myself and the b, &B Finder team are taking Mary's legacy to new levels. It gave the three of us great pleasure to announce with Mary the creation of the Mary White Educational Scholarship Fund. And as Lisa shared, Mary's dedication to the innkeeping education began many years ago with her B&B Finder client newsletters, and most recently was recognized globally as the author of the Inkeeping for Dummies book. We honored Mary White's desire to continue to promote and sustain that mission by providing aspiring and new innkeepers access to the educational tools they need to be successful in our industry. The fund will equip new and aspiring innkeepers for one year at no charge with the ability to participate in all that ALP, which is our new combined national association, provides full access to the member newsletters, webinars, conference member pricing. And um, it was not our intention when we put together the scholarship that we would expect Mary to make the first contribution, but she insisted in true Mary fashion, she generously made her first pledge of $50,000 to the fund. And um, we hope that uh, everyone will continue to pledge and inspire new generations of innkeepers to follow in our footsteps to join in this vibrant industry and association. So thank you for taking time, uh, especially today, to continue to learn and educate yourselves on the industry. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started is that we do have several properties who have joined us today on the webinar. So we do have everyone on mute. So you'll see on your screen there that there's a questions box where you can uh, submit questions as we go through the session today. We have Annie, 
on the call with us from ACORN as well, who will be fielding questions with Lisa. And um, we're also recording today's session and we'll send you a copy of it after it's completed so that as you're taking notes, um, just know that you'll also get the, the recording of this as well. And um, I'm gonna introduce Lisa and then I'm gonna run a couple quick, quick polls so we can get a sense of who we have on our call today. So we are honored to have Lisa Kolb as our presenter today. Uh, in 1996, after almost a decade of solely working in the corporate world of software development and design, Lisa moved to Colorado Springs to open a bed and breakfast with her husband, Mark. And in January of 2002, Mark and Lisa formed Acorn Internet Services. Acorn is currently providing service for hundreds of satisfied digital marketing clients. Acorn has made it their mission to support our industry and their innkeepers by a legislation for better treatment by Google, OTA, and ADA lawsuits, and knowledge being your path to success. So it's going to be a great session today. So much to learn about how you can get involved in the book direct movement. So the first poll that I'm going to launch for everyone is just to get a sense of um, who is currently a member of BNP Finder. And for those of you who've never been a member or you've been a member in the past, um, we acquired the business from Mary back in April and have been making several um, big strides towards improving the whole traveler experience and the, and the website experience and um, building a leading directory to provide direct bookings, uh, which has been a gap in the industry for a long time. So it uh, looks like we've got almost everyone here who's responded, so that's great. The next poll that I'm going to launch is critical because as Lisa is talking about direct bookings and the importance of them, having Google Analytics and being able to track the data and the performance of your marketing channels is key. And um, I'm actually going to share these poll results with you. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. Don't be shy. Please answer this question because it is crucial. And I ask this pretty much every time that I'm presenting because I like to find out how many innkeepers are actually tracking their Google Analytics, Google Analytics, but even more importantly, how many of them understand what they are looking at. And most properties now have Google Analytics installed, but that 22% that have it set up, but don't know if it's set up correctly or don't understand it, it's common. And we're gonna talk about that today. And the 16% who don't have it installed at all or, or haven't um, used it in the past, I cannot stress enough, and I know Lisa will as well, that it's incredibly important that you um, get Google Analytics implemented. And the final poll before we get started is to know if you have a booking engine for your website. And this might seem like a crazy question to be asking in 2020, but um, we, Definitely want to know if we have you know, any properties. And it looks like there's a couple on the call today who don't have a book. So for you, tracking will be a little bit different. But 98% of the properties who are on the call today do have a booking engine. So great information to know as we get ready to dig in. And it is my honor to present to you Lisa Cole. Thank you, Janice. Good morning, everyone. And Janice, as we get going, I'm going to ask you to pop one more poll of not yet, but you can prep it. I'd like to know how many people have actually reached out to the representatives, uh, representatives, um, either the House or the Senate. So we'll ask that question when we get there. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about Book Direct, and there's so many avenues about Book Direct that we can talk about. I'm going to try to touch on each one, but we don't have enough time to go into every single one in full detail. That would take us a couple of days. So I attended the Miami Book Direct Conference in um, October of last year, and it was sponsored by a company called Triptease. You may, not, you may know them. You might even actually use them um, to help you drive direct booking. There were about 300 plus or minus attendees, and out of those 300 plus or minus attendees, um, they pretty much all came from independent lodging properties with 100 rooms or more. So not the big Hyatts or Marriott's. They were the smaller independently owned big properties. And there were speakers at this conference. It was a two-day conference. And there were speakers that were vendors who got up and spoke, including Triptease and Google and um, tr 
TripAdvisor, there were and, and then there were some other vendors that do marketing and things like that. But they also had hoteliers speak. So there was a lot of good information because the book direct dilemma is not just for us. It is literally across the board for all lodging properties from small one to two room bed and breakfasts all the way up to the huge corporate um, properties. So knowing what you don't know is very important. And as Janice was saying, if you don't have data, you can't make data driven decisions to increase your direct bookings. So if you don't have your Google Analytics e-commerce tracking installed and that it's actually showing you referrals of a variety of referrals and they're not all bucketing in one bucket. I mean, there's so many levels of accuracy with Google Analytics that you could have it installed, but it might not be tracking money. You could have it installed and it is tracking money, but it's tracking money under one um, referral. If you see a whole lot of direct referrals, talk to your webmaster, that needs to get fixed because direct is the bucket that is the catch-all bucket for when Google doesn't know where something came from. If you don't have your web, online web presence installed correctly, your tracking is going to be off, and then you're not going to be able to have good data to make data-driven decisions. So make sure that your direct bucket is not overly full. There's going to be some in there. Direct, um, most people think that the direct bucket means they got a direct booking. That's not how this works in Google. Um, the direct bucket means that Google couldn't find a home for that referral or somebody literally typed in your web address directly. The majority of those are Google is just using it as a catch-all bucket. If that bucket is the majority of all of your bookings, that's not helping you make good decisions. You've got to get that repaired. So as Janice said, we have got to get our industry on tracking, getting data so that you can make good decisions. because. If you want to drive more direct bookings, you got to figure out what's working, what's not, and make corrections. So let's start with, what does it really mean to have a guest to book direct? Well, it simply means that there is a button on your website that takes them directly to your booking engine. It could have a date and time in it. It could just be a button. But direct bookings are, are bookings that come through your booking engine. And as Janice did the poll, if you don't have a booking engine, then direct bookings are only going to pretty much be phone calls because you don't have a way to track them online. Everybody really should look at having an online booking engine. There's, it's in today's world, people want to be able to book online. So direct bookings come from your booking engine. And a lot of people think that direct bookings should be free. They're not. They used to be back years ago when I was in keeping, direct bookings were pretty much free. You put up a website, Google indexed it, people called you, you made a booking. <laughs> and that tells you how old I am. But direct bookings today are not free. Everybody's gotten into the game. So um, when I was at that Miami conference, I met a gentleman who owns this property. These are the type of folks that came to that book direct conference. And he owns the Grand Case Beach Club, and they, we were all having an afternoon drink and snacks, and I, those stand-up um, tall, like, uh, cocktail tables. He was standing there. I just went over and introduced myself. And I said, so, tell me, what do you think of the conference? He goes, quite frankly, I think it's a bunch of snake oil. Why should I have to pay? Why should I have to pay to have a direct booking? And I said, oh, hmm, one of those to myself. <laughs> I said, Okay. I said, so grab your phone and show me on TripAdvisor uh, your property. And he does. And I said, okay, so I'm on, I'm on here, and I could book with Booking.com. I could book with Expedia. I could book with Travelocity. There's all these places that you are selling your rooms. I said, but how do I book direct? I'm on TripAdvisor, but you don't give me an option to either click on your website or you, you're not doing TripConnect so that I can book direct. I have no way to book direct. I said, so – if you're not playing the game and paying to play the game, you're basically saying to your guests, well, it's okay. I don't care if you book direct or not. And he kind of understood that you actually, this isn't free anymore. And all of the strategies that we learned, and I'm going to share some of them with you today, it, booking direct is not, is not free. And trying to create programs where you pay to get a direct booking is really important. 
um, because they're just not free anymore. So he kind of associated direct with free, and that's just not the way it is. So everyone wants a piece of your pie. Google wants a piece. Booking.com wants a piece. Expedia and all of their downstream partners want a piece. TripAdvisor wants a piece of your pie. Everybody wants a piece of your pie. The question is, is who's going to help you manage those pieces? Because, again, it's not free. It just doesn't exist. Google charges for the majority of your direct bookings. The free stuff, and I'll show you, has, has, has gotten pushed to the bottom of the pile. TripAdvisor, there's no free ride with them anymore. You, you, you either pay to play or you end up at the bottom of the pile, and it, it, it's just the way it is. Booking.com and Expedia, you have to pay them probably 15 to 21 percent per booking to get a booking through them. If you sign up with a directory, I mean, as much as I'm sure B&B Finder would love to give away free listings, they wouldn't be in business if they didn't charge you a fee to advertise for you. It isn't free anymore. The list goes on. So why is it that this used to work 10 years ago, five years ago, but it doesn't work today? It's because Google... It's smart. They're basically finding ways to make your free listing less visible. So remember the old organic days when you always were changing your keywords and your, I mean, this is old school, way, way old school. Shouldn't be doing this anymore because it doesn't work. Um, but you would put in keyword phrases and you'd update your website every couple of days and you, you'd try to aim for that top position in Google. Well, that top position isn't anywhere near top anymore. <laughs> um, the gentleman who spoke at the Miami conference from Google basically told everybody, well, our, our first organic listing, that's where you would have been seen for free, used to be 360 pixels from the top of the screen before their latest change. It used to be way closer to the top of the screen five, six, seven years ago. But now they have pushed that all the way down to 900 pixels to even see the first result. And in this case, the first result was bedandbreakfast.com, which we all know isn't bedandbreakfast.com. It's really Expedia. Everything Google does is about making money. They have put the four pack in there. They've got all this visual eye candy to get you to click on it. They, they show you all the pricing. And the organic listings have been pushed down. And this is something I just noticed yesterday that the organic listings used to have 10 organic listings on page one, and now I'm seeing eight. I don't know if they're just testing that or if that's a final fix, but now there's only eight slots. And back in the old days, probably eight out of 10 would have been a direct or an actual direct pro uh, property, like a real bed and breakfast. And about four years ago at Thanksgiving, they changed that, and it was all about directories, and maybe two or three, maybe four properties would show up in the top ten. Everybody else got pushed to page two. Well, Google's just changed that visibility from ten slots to eight, and the majority of them are filled with Expedia, TripAdvisor, Booking.com, Kayak, all, all of the directories, the independent in give up trying to be found organically for your location because Google has overtaken it. So what we used to get for free is so far down the pile. And on mobile, you got to thumb, thumb up your screen like eight times before you even get to organic, if you ever get to organic, because the second you click on one of those local listings, you're gone. You'll never see those organic listings. So Google's really very deliberate in what they're doing. They're, and Google's your number one provider of bookings. If you book in your analytics and it's tracking right, you'll see Google is the big boy. But this free stuff is getting harder and harder and harder to get because they're making it harder and harder to get. So this is just do a search on your in name. And once you do, I want you to start mentally doing this with your screen. I want you to draw a line down the center of the screen. And I want you to start thinking about what's old and what's new. Everything on the left-hand side is the old organic side. So that's an ad. It's, they're just called Google Ads. They used to be called Google AdWords. And then there's 
there you should see your listing there. This in buys their own in name so that they can be listed as an ad and as themselves, probably because an OTA is purchasing ads in their name. So everything on the left is the old school stuff. Now remember, I didn't do a location on this search. Location phrases, you get pushed way down. I just did the in-name search because what you want to pay attention to is the knowledge panel on the right. And this is, this is where Google in 2016 started putting all of their information on the right-hand side of the screen. And that website button, that website button goes to your website, but you, have, you don't need any criteria for that website button. It, it, you don't need an awesome website. It doesn't have to load fast. You don't have to have SEO. In fact, you can have one of these listings without a website. That website button has very little to do with the work you put into your website other than the fact that it links to it. So the point is, is that Google is teaching your ingoing public to not look at the left-hand side of the screen. They're teaching them to look at the right-hand side of the screen. And I know that because we started tracking that website button separately. See that big book of room button? I hope everybody realizes that doesn't come to you. That goes to one of your OTAs. And if you don't use an OTA or it's not available for, you don't have rooms on an OTA for an available date, then you don't even see the book a room button and it just says um, visit, visit the website for accommodations. So this whole right-hand side of the screen, if you hear the word meta search, that's where all of these ads down here are. This is your meta search area. And this is where everybody wants a piece of your pie. And the problem is, is that Google is teaching people to come here. On mobile, you don't see the left-hand side of the screen. You see the ad, then you see the stuff on the right-hand side of the screen, and then you scroll on down, and then maybe you get to the organic stuff on the left. So more and more people using mobile, less and less people go in the old route through the organic listings. And Google added this four or five, six months ago, where if you use an OTA, they're even taking up some space in the organic side to send people over to the meta search side to book a room. So you can see that Google's pushing everybody this way. And um, on our website button there, we did some tracking. We actually tracked the end name on the left-hand side of the screen separately in analytics and we did that website button to see what the division was and I'll show you a sample. Now this division is not Martine in, this is somebody else, but we just pulled one. So remember that, oh here let me go back up, there it is. So when you look on the left-hand side of the screen, the dark blue line is how much visitation came to the website from the left-hand side of the screen. And the light blue is how much visitation came to the website from the right-hand side of the screen or maps or mobile. Do you see that that soft blue color is every single month bigger than the dark blue, which means more and more people are using, I mean, Google's succeeding. They're getting people to use their meta search side. And as we move into the future, I expect that to be even more and more so where your old organic website and the placement of it is going to have less and less visibility and less and less people clicking on it. Now, they're still going to see your website. You still have to have a good website. It has to be fast. has to be ADA compliant. You still have to have all those things on it because even when somebody is clicking that website button, they're still seeing it and they need a good user experience. But the old SEO um, idea of, oh, I'm going to just work on SEO and SEO this and SEO that, mm -mm. you got to concentrate on other things, things that drive business from the meta search side of the screen and not the left-hand side of the screen. Remember, meta search is the right. So how much should you be paying for a direct booking? So let's go back to direct bookings. What should you be paying? Um, where you actually own the client's data. This was a really big deal of all the speakers in the Miami conference the direct book uh, summit. If you own that guest, you can upsell that guest into the future. You can do anniversary reminders and get them to book. You can do birthday reminders and get them to book. You can do same time next year reminders and get them to book. They're your guest. You have a chance to resell to them. Owning your guest data is really important. So what are you willing to pay? Are you willing to pay 5%? when your OTAs are at 18, 
probably. Are you willing to spend 5 to 10, 10 to 15, or more than 15? Well, but the problem is there's no one-size-fits-all answer here. I wish there was, but there's not. Every property is different. If you're in a highly trafficked area where everybody's using OTAs, you're probably going to have to spend almost as much, if not the same, as an OTA to own that guest. If you're in a smaller area, maybe just a destination area where there's not a lot of competition, you may not need to spend as much. Everybody's different. So if you know me, you know I like movies, and I like movie quotes. So we're going to do one here real quick. Um, I'm sure, even whether you will admit it or not, most people have seen Pretty Woman with Richard Gere and Julie Roberts. And this is the scene where he takes her back to the hotel room and um, she's sitting there on the floor and he orders strawberries and champagne. And she says to him, I appreciate this whole seduction scene you've got going, but let me give you a tip. I'm a sure thing. So when a guest books through an OTA, that percentage you're paying for that booking is a sure thing. There's no guessing. It's not a pay-per-click cost. It's not random. You're paying a fixed rate. It's a sure thing. You know exactly what that rate is. So what is your sure thing? What is your fixed rate when you go through an OTA? Is it 15? Is it 18? Is it 21? What are you paying to get that guest? What's your line in the sand? You need to know that so that you can determine how much really should you be investing in your direct bookings so that you can say, okay, this is my goal. If you don't have a goal, you have nothing to work towards. So you need a goal as to where you're, you're aiming for. And you got to know what it is you're already spending so you know how much you're willing to spend. And here's just a side thought. There's a lot of people who say, well, what should my marketing budget be? Well, let's just take this to the extreme. Let's say that you sell every single room, every single night of the year through an online travel agency. And you don't even have a website. You do nothing but sell through OTAs. Your overall expenditure would be 18% of your revenue because you're paying them 18%. So what is your line in the sand? You really need to know this so that you can work towards it. So where do direct bookings come from? Now, we're going back to discuss how do you get a direct booking. Obviously, they have to get to your booking engine to make a direct booking, or they call you on the phone. But where do they come from? Well, they may come from Google, Bing, or Yahoo ads. Those are the old Google AdWords, and Bing and Yahoo, they have ad programs too. They might be from Facebook Boost. You might be boosting your ads. Um, they might come from directors, directories like D&D Finder. They might come from Google Hotel ads. And Google Hotel ads, here, let's go back up there. I have, okay, paging up. <laughs> well, maybe not paging up. Let's see if I can get it to work. Okay, there's Google Hotel ads. So remember on the meta search side of the screen, all those places where the OTAs were? You can purchase a program directly with Google through a third party. Sometimes it's a multiple set of third parties to get a little green bed ad that competes with the OTAs. Again, you have to pay for them, but at least you're on that visual side where people's eyes are going instead of just on the left-hand side. So Google Hotel Ads is another way to get direct bookings. Then display ads. There are many companies out there that will let you do display ads, prospecting, and re retargeting and remarketing where the ads pop up after the fact on another location when somebody's been searching for you and then later it pops up, good tools, but you got to pay for them to, to drive more direct booking. And then paid TripAdvisor programs. You have their three levels of business programs, the basic one with no link, the standard one with an inside link, and the premium one with an inside and an outside link. So they also offer their Trip Connect program, which is a really valid program. Um, again, you want to be careful setting all this stuff up because if you set it up wrong, it could spend more money than you really want to be spending. Um, Price-led web experiences. Okay, let's get back to that. Revenue management, where you're controlling your pricing across all fronts. Texting programs. And I don't know why my little images, there it is, texting programs. Um, we're finding this works really well with our clients. If 90% of your guests want to use mobile messaging, 
you really need to let them talk to you this way because it goes back to the concept of old school. You're handling that guest. You can keep them from accidentally booking on an OTA if you're handling them, but you got to get them. You got to talk to them. And then finally, any paid listing sites, like if you do weddings, you do pets, boutique hotels, any of those paid listing sites, association sites, local, regional, state sites, basically any website where you pay for a link um, to your booking engine where direct bookings can occur. So this is where your direct bookings are coming from. But creating a book direct plan is not just mathematical. It's also art. I mean, you have to look at this. You have to look at your analytics as just a piece of the pie, and you have to figure out all the division. I mean, if you know that your OTAs are like 10 or 20% of all your bookings, that's pretty decent. But if you know your OTAs are 70 or 80% of all your bookings, you're spending 18% on a whole bunch of money. So you need to create a direct booking program to drive more people using the tools that I just talked about, um, revisiting knowing your data so that you know even where to start. If you don't have your data, you don't really even know where to start. So you all should be able to build this little um, pie chart. You should have three pieces in your pie. One should be direct booking, one should be phone, and one should be OTAs. And I'd put down the money on each one of them, and I would put down the percentage so you can start to get a feel of where you exactly stand. So if you're not monitoring and managing your marketing, you got to start this. This is, this is imperative. If you want more direct bookings, you got to figure out what you got now, how it's working, and how to improve upon it or add to it. So here's our second movie quote. Um, it was uh, the movie Now You See Me. I don't know how many of you folks saw this one. It had Jesse Eisenberg and Mark Ruffalo, and Jesse Eisenberg was a magician. And Mark Ruffalo is in an interrogation room. He is the police officer. And Jesse is handcuffed to the desk. And he's talking really fast, and he's trying to unhook his handcuffs, and he's wiggling around a whole bunch. And then he pops his handcuffs free, and he jumps up out of the chair, and he says, the first rule of magic, always be the smartest guy in the room. Well, when it comes to direct bookings, you need to be the smartest guy in the marketplace. And you do that by having data. When you know what your data says, you can make intelligent decisions to grow more direct bookings. So how did we end up here? How did we get here? It wasn't like this before. I was an innkeeper from 96 to 2005, and I've been helping innkeepers since 2002. It wasn't always like this. It has changed. Google has changed. So it was April Fool's Day 2016. I mean, and I seriously thought it was an April Fool's joke when we started seeing this. But this is when Google started pushing, back then was the seven pack. It used to be a 10 pack, now it's four pack. Then it went to a three pack, now it's a four pack. Um, Google said, we're going to determine placement, not just the way we used to, which was your name, address, city, state, zip, phone, website, authority, inbound links, um, reviews, all the, those hundreds of things that they determined it on kind of got pushed to the back seat, and they said, if you don't give us an available room through an OTA, you don't really get very good placement. And it's all date-driven. So now the top, being top dog is based on the date. What date are you top dog? Because it doesn't work any other way now. It's all based on dates. So when Google changed this to a date-driven system, they started getting a kickback from everybody who sold rooms for them, for, for you on their system. Then in March of 2019, I think Google realized that they couldn't control what they had built as long as we were part of all types of small businesses. So they took out the travel portion and set it aside so that the algorithms that they incur against us and our, our industry is different than the general populace like plumbers, doctors, and lawyers. So that was in March when they set up this new travel search and got even more involved in being a piece of the pie. They, they, they want to get a piece of your pie, period. So this is what caused all these free bookings to diminish. Google got in the way. They got in the middle of what we used to get for free, and now you got to pay for it. 
So 70% of your time, your guests have absolutely no clue they booked on an online travel agency. You know this. They come to you and you say, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't help you fix that reservation. And they start fussing at you because they are insistent that they booked direct. And they didn't. They didn't have a clue they booked on another website like an OTA or Booking.com or Expedia, any of those OTA sites. So our industry, it was January a year ago, we came together. I went, um, Acorn, me, I went to Rob at AIHP and Chris at Pi, and I said, look, we have got to try to find a way to help our industry. We knew this had happened. We knew we knew what was coming down the, the pipe. We had to do something. Um, so we started a, a website called bookdirect.education. Don't go to bookdirect.com. That's not going to work for you. It's bookdirect.education because we're trying to educate our industry on how to um, work in today's environment of getting bookings. So if you haven't signed up, please subscribe so that you know what's happening. And I'm about to go over some of the things that have been happening. I want to introduce you to Allison Cabaretta. Allison is an innkeeper. Um, she is a fourth generation innkeeper at the Metamere Resort in Algonquin, Maine. And she serves or has served on the Algonquin Chamber of Commerce, and she's a member of the Notre Dame Business Council. And she sits on the Hospitality Main Board of Directors, Government Affairs, um, et cetera, et cetera. So Allison has been tracking what Google has done to her family's business for the last four years. And I think it's between, I think it's, she is now spending 400% more to get what she used to get for free. So she had to, she had to get on the paid bandwagon because she, you had, she had to sell rooms, but the cost, because Google has placed all of these obstacles in your way, got very large. Well, what's interesting is that Allison knows Greg Dougal, who is the, I guess he's the CEO president of the main hospitality group. And Greg and I have known each other for decades. And Greg's like, hey, Allison, you need to meet Lisa. Lisa, you need to meet Allison. And we got to talking. And I said, she was invited, and I think that's on my next screen, she was invited to speak at the Congressional House Small Business Committee meeting back in November. And that's when Greg and hooked her up with me, and I said, what can I do to support you? And she had all of her data. And we went to our clients and we said, actually, our clients in the whole industry, and said, what kind of data do you have that we can send with Allison to support Allison in, in this quest? Because she had, she had everybody's ears. She was going to be able to get them to listen to her. And very few innkeepers could give me the kind of data she had. We had it from our clients, but we didn't really have it across the board, and we wanted a big number. We wanted a big showing to support her. So what we decided to do instead is that um, we dropped back and said we're going to do a petition. Now, in case you want to know who is on this actual committee, this Congressional House Small Business Committee, Annie is going to drop in the chat box this URL. If any, if you're in a state where you have a representative who has volunteered or has joined this committee, because there's a whole bunch of people on this committee, um, and if they're in your state, they are probably going to be the first person you want to reach out to. So let me bring that up. So we've got the last quiz is the chairwoman. Then we have um, Iowa, Maine, New Jersey, Colorado, Kansas, California, Texas, Pennsylvania, Illinois, New York, New York, Pennsylvania again, Minnesota, Ohio. Uh, no, oh, um, uh, I should know what that is. It's the United Samoans, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. Like I said, I tell everybody, now that I've been helping with all these things, I really should have paid better attention to my political science classes and my history because um, government's hard for me. Give, give me tech, give me data any day, but I'm not, I'm not well-versed when it comes to governmental anything. Ohio, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Tennessee, Florida, and Pennsylvania. So there's all of the folks 
that are on this committee who listened to Allison Cavaretta's testimony. So Annie's going to put the link out there. If you want to look through that, if, one, if you're in a state with one of these folks, these are the folks you want to talk to because we're going to talk about how you get involved because we need help with this. Aside from the fact that you just have to play Google's game and figure out how to do what you need to do to keep your revenue flowing, we got to try to fix some of these problems because Google keeps making it harder and harder. I mean, seriously, 10 listings down to 8. I mean, what's it going to be, five before we know it? They're, they keep changing everything, and it's not in our favor. All right, so back to our PowerPoint. Oops. There we go. Now, I actually want to play a little bit of Allison's presentation. And uh, Annie's going to put a couple of links in the chat box. One goes to the video. And the other goes to a printed document with Allison's testimony. Because we need everybody in our industry involved. We need you speaking to your representatives. And if they happen to be on the House Committee uh, for Small Business, go after them and talk to them. If they're not, go after your regular representatives. I'm going to show you how to speak to them. So I am going to play a bit of this, just a bit of the video. All right. See if I can do this and you can hear it. When you first meet Colorado, now you recognize the planet. Thank you, Chairwoman Velasquez, Ranking Member Shabbat, and members of this committee. I am Allison Cavaretta, a multi generation small business owner at the Meadowview Resort in Concord, Maine. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am here to explain why Google's most recent actions in traveling with some concerned small business, how this behavior is harming the consumer, and to urge relief from Google's near monopoly access to market. While Google's testimony from July 2019 states that they are proud to work with small businesses, that claim is not uniform. While Google's testimony from July, um, excuse me, examples of an unequal playing field for hoteliers range from the 2016 Play to Play Book Here button to currently prohibiting access to the Post and View Room product. Most recently, March 2019's algorithm change prioritizes paid products, reportedly wiped $13 billion in market value off the largest players in travel, and is harming direct bookings with small hotels like mine. The results often mislead the consumer to the highest bidder and not to our website. Google is an unavoidable gatekeeper. Over 93% of searches begin on Google. Then soon, a majority of these searches result in zero clicks because Google sends these clicks to their own products, YouTube, Maps, subdomains of Google.com, and over a dozen others. Our July correspondence to Congress on the March update is dated just one day after Google claimed to not engage in such practices at a House Judiciary Committee hearing. I will focus on the Google My Business listing product, commonly referred to as the GMB, and as I will refer to it as such hereafter, an increasing middleman. Since the March update took effect, when comparing May to September this year against last year, the following concerns are observed for our hotel. A 36% increase in visits to that GMB product from Google's own search or map product, but only a 5% increase in visits to our website from the GMB. A 22% increase in phone calls to our GMB, but a concerning 33% increase in direct phone reservations. The click-through rate of 3.8% for our listing is an outstanding search result since across all industries, an average click-through rate for search ads is only 1.91%. And I cannot help but wonder if Google is able to push the GMB performance to outstanding levels by funding searches to its own products complete with pay to play booking. All right, so I think everybody gets the gist of the fact that Allison had her data for her in, and she's telling the entire uh, committee what's going on. And I, if you, I really encourage you to watch the entire. Um, the entire thing. I mean, it starts at around 2.30, and it, it's, it's very interesting. But the bottom line was one of, the, one of the people that sat on this committee actually said, Ms. Cavaretta, have you tried to pick up the phone and call Google and explain the issue? And I texted her immediately after this. I said, I don't even know how you kept a straight face. I mean, seriously, could we call Google and tell them, hey, quit taking our money? Seriously. 
it, it's amazing what we need to do in the way of educating our representatives. They need to know what Google's doing to you. All right, so moving on. This is how we supported Allison. We had 900 signatures. I, I was able, with the help of PI, AHP, and a lot of the state associations, to get 900 signatures on a petition that she handed to everybody on that committee. And you can see which groups um, had more folks, which groups had less folks who signed. And this is where I would like, if um, Gannis can do it for us, if you could put that poll out there. I want to know how many of you guys on this call actually signed that petition. Or you've actually contacted your, your, um, your representative. That's what we want to know. Are you involved? Are you working towards this? Because we, we need to know. Because if you're not, we need to help you do it. We have to stand up for our industry. This is the breakdown. These are the number of people in each state. We even had Canada, District of Columbia, Mexico, and the Virgin Islands all jumping on to the communication that PI and AIHP and the state associations and ACORN was able to gather all this. And, you know, we gathered all 900 of these in less than two weeks. I mean, to get 900 innkeepers to agree on one thing in less than two weeks is unheard of. So those of you who contributed, thank you. For those of you who didn't, I have to-dos for you to join us to do more. Um, what, what's our poll look like, Jana? Yeah, so we've got about 67% voted, so I'm going to give it just another minute. And um, I just wanted to add just one thing to that, that, um, one of the things that we had talked about, Lisa and I, at the recent conferences is that at B&B Finder, <clears throat> we actually started to put together a page to list all of the associations in the industry. And what I found just shocking was, you know, there's about 78 or so associations that includes national, regional, state associations. And of those associations, around 1,700 properties are members. And when you think about those numbers and you think about there's roughly between 10 to 12,000 B&Bs in the U.S. is what they estimate. It's such a small percentage that are involved. And when you see what Lisa just shared and the power of coming together as an industry and how our voice is so much stronger when we're together, you think about the opportunity that we have to engage all of those other, you know, 9,000 plus properties that just aren't aware of what's happening. So um, I'm going to just close the poll now. It looks like we've got about 73%, and I'm going to share the results here so all of you can see this. Um, you know, with 39% that have reached out, you know, thank you. We can't thank you enough. And and I love seeing, you know, the 45% that say, you know, no, I haven't reached out, but I want to know how. And that's what this is all about, is coming together. And so we will definitely help you understand how you can reach out. And that's where we're going next, because I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. I also want you to know that out of those 900 signatures, 300 of you took the time to actually write a personal comment. There's 36 pages that were printed and handed to every one of those committee meeting people um, on the committee to hear what you felt like you wanted to say. And I actually want to just kind of zoom through this live. Um, let's see, I gotta go back over here. I close down Allison. I want to go to this. So Alaska, we had a handful of people in Alaska writing. Um, Arizona put in some comments. And they're all pretty much the same. Um, we're small. We can't afford to give commissions. There's Arkansas. Here's California. What's being done to hotels by Google and their partners is the classic definition of antitrust. It goes on and on. There's quotes from Colorado with people telling their whole story of how much did I spend and what did it cost me. For those of you who actually filled out the petition and you put in comments, know that these comments actually made it to somebody's hands. Um, Allison was able to hand in these packets, these little booklets of all this information. 
um, including her testimony that, Al, that Aunt Annie has put into the chat box. Annie's going to put this link into the chat box so you can see what people in your, your city or your state were saying. But it all, it, it, it was amazing how everybody came together on this. And we were able to support Allison's drive to take this to the public, to get people to pay attention and listen. So thank you for those of you who did this. Then, after Allison held the committee meeting and she did everything she did, we started getting questions from the committee and others saying, okay, well, we need to better understand what has Google done? What did they really do? So then I put together this PDF that I'm going to walk you through, and you can have access to this too. Um, if you want to use this with your representatives, by all means, attach it and send it to them. If they want to talk about it, you call me. I will schedule an appointment with whoever wants me to explain this to them. Um, but I want to walk you through it. This is what Google has changed. I have three sections. The first one is the desktop or is the Google My Business account. You, you guys should be very familiar with this. This is your Google My Business login. If you go under info, you will see that you may not type a description. You are not allowed as a lodging property to put in a description. That's because Google generates that description from other locations. They don't want you saying anything in your description that shows up on the Google My Business that says book direct. They don't want that, so they won't let you edit your description. The second thing is, is that if you're not, if, if you're not keeping track of what's happening in the industry, you probably don't know about this. But there is something called a posts feature. It's an advertising feature that your Google My Business account gives you if you are not a lodging property, which is interesting because cabins can do this, but everybody else can't doctors, plumbers, lawyers, I can do this. I can put out posts and I do. And what it is is a little advertising bubble with a picture that comes up on my Google My Business listing that sells something. Can you imagine the power we would have if B&Bs could put up a post? You could put up your specials. You could have put up anything about when you book direct. You know, you could put up sales topics that would bring people to you directly, but Google doesn't want that happening because if they put up your Google My Business listing, they don't want anybody booking direct with you. They won't get a cut of the pie. So you don't get to use posts. I want posts. I think they should give them to us. Um, appointment URL. I have a couple clients who are not in the lodging industry, and they have an appointment calendar. Wouldn't it be awesome if Google would just give us the appointment calendar for us to hook our booking engines to? But, of course, they won't because then somebody would book direct and they wouldn't get a piece of the pie. And then finally, this is the UTM tracker code that we use to figure out how many more people are going to that right-hand side of the screen, the meta search side. And the problem with this is, is that for some ends, Google wipes this out the second they put it in. And we don't know why. It, it almost, I mean, if you, are, if you um, ever lean towards the conspiracy side of things, we just wonder why Google won't leave it alone so we can track it. And it isn't for everybody, which is really odd. Some people, they put it on a week later, it's off. Other people, they put it on and it stays. But this is how we knew that the general public is sliding to the right-hand side of your display screen when they're looking at your name. Then, I want to talk about the display in Maps on Google Desktop. I don't know how many of you guys remember, but back in the old days, like, before Google got crazy with trying to make money off of our bookings, we actually had a website button on the outside of the, I think it was the seven pack at that time. It actually said just click to visit website. You can't get to the website anymore. You have to go into the listing, you have to go onto the page, and then you have to click the website button if you can get, drag your eyes away from the big blue book a room button. Okay? So Google took this away. I want it back put the website button back. I mean, on plumbers, doctors, and lawyers, the website button's right out there on the listing. Why can't we have it? And this is the one that everybody laughs at, but if we don't ask, you'll never get it. So we should ask. That big book, big blue book a room button, I want to see split in half. I want two buttons, one that says book direct on hotel site and one that says book with travel agents. I, I, they're misleading and they're creating issues with your guests. And I would love to see that broken into two buttons. So we're asking. That's all we can do is ask. And then Google took off the phone numbers and the ability to visit the website off of the main map listing. 
I mean, everybody else gets phone numbers, but if somebody picked up the phone and called you, then they wouldn't get a cut of the booking. So Google basically removed every last thing that you could have used to help yourself get those direct bookings that we used to get forever for free. This one's a little more complicated. Google is using a sponsored page when you buy the green Google um, hotel ad, the little green bed. They give you a sponsored page if you pay more for something called, um, it's called preferred ho hotels preferred, preferred spon sponsored preferred. And it's something with the word preferred. But you don't get it unless you have a company that can support it with the little green bed ads, and none of the companies in our industry can support this piece. Only the big boys can. So they're basically misleading the public saying you're booking on the hotel site. Yeah, you are, but you still gave Google a kickback. Um, and we don't get those because we can't play in that world. And then finally, this whole same concept comes over to mobile. Why don't we have a website button and why don't we have a call button? I mocked it up and said, this is what I want. Put it back. I want. I, I, I mean, doctors and plumbers and lawyers get website buttons. They get phone numbers. Why can't we have them? Well, we know why Google doesn't want to give them to us, but is there a way to force Google to even the playing field? I hope so. Um, and even on mobile, I want two buttons. Book direct on hotel websites, book direct with travel, or book with travel agent. I mean, make it clear because this book a room thing is not good. The other day, I saw Google testing something in the wild where that big blue book a room button is. They had check availability instead of book a room. So I feel like maybe they're getting some pressure and they're playing with different things. Uh, I don't think they'll ever break it into two, but who knows? If the government tells them they have to, maybe they will. Um, and then finally, if you don't play the OTA game, this is what pops up. It says, contact this property or visit the website for rates and availability. But they don't have the links on it. It's just words. They make your guests go figure out how to visit your website for rates and availability. Wouldn't it be so simple if Google would just put some links on it? Of course they're not because they don't want anybody coming to your website to book a room. They want them booking through an online travel agency or some other product in which they make money off of you. So if you want to use that PDF when you're speaking with your representatives, by all means, take it and send it to them. If they don't understand it, I will set up a call and walk them through it. I am happy to spend my time this way. So. For you innkeepers who haven't yet participated, Annie's going to drop the what to do next link into the chat box, and I'm going to walk you through exactly what you need to do next. So if you haven't reached out to your representatives, this is what you need to do. Um, go to that website link that Annie put into the chat box, and before we do anything, you got to figure out how to find the person you want to write to. So we're going to click the find House emails or find Senate emails, because you need to address both the House and the Senate. It, it, it was heard in the House, but we're hearing, um, we're hearing rumors that the Senate is paying attention to. So write to your senators and write to your representatives, write to both sides of, the, of, of your governmental support. Now, let me go back over here. If you click the one for your representative, so your House representative, that link, that pink link, will take you over it. I think it was pink. Let's make sure it was pink. Yes, house is pink. It'll take you over here, and you got to figure out what state you're in. And I'm going to just drop us down to Florida because I, I want to show you how to do this. And Florida would be a good example. Um, I am looking for Ross Spano. He's a Republican, and he is on the Small Business Committee. Now, if you don't have somebody in your state on a small business committee, look through what they support, or maybe you, that you, you're familiar with one of the names and you just want to write to them. But look through and try to pick the one that seems like it's the most, that makes the most sense. Most of the time it's like ju uh, judiciary or financial, things like that. But I want to use Ross. So here's Ross's web page, and I want to write to Ross and tell him what's happening to our industry. So there's usually a contact button up here. And if you click the email, well, let's see if I can get to the email me, the email page. And then it comes down here and it says email, send me an email. So you need to have your zip code, 33584, and I don't know if I have the rest of that zip code. We'll see if it'll let me in. Yep. And then you get a form. And you fill out your form 
and down here in the comments is where you're going to put your letter to them. So every single representative has something similar to this. You've got to find them first, then you've got to get to their contact page, and then go ahead and have your letter written and just block copy it in. So what do you want to put in your letter? That is also um, thanks to Allison. She helped us build the starter kit for the letters. So let's go back over here. <laughs> and let me just do the house one. And this is older, so you really need to read this and pick out what you want and what you don't want. Dear Honorable whoever you are, well, it's in a news, it's in, it's in an email, so he already knows you're writing to them or her. And you can say, I'm a resident and a voter of, and put all your information in here. And then in March of 2019, Google made these changes. And with these changes, I'm pushed below the fold. I mean, you can use as much or as little of this as you want. The one thing that you will want to look at changing is that um, Allison had had in here, it does not escape me that this letter is dated just after November 14th when the committee was heard. You might just reference, this is in relationship to the committee meeting that was held on November 14th, and we want this to continue being heard. It, it was a few months ago, but this is still on our minds. This is still important to us. So you can use as much or as little of this as you would like, but once you craft what you want to say, um, then you go back over to your presentation or to your um, page where we found who we were, we were writing to. Where was it? I will find it right here. And you just drop it into the comment section and you send it. Then you wait because then there's another step. I would I would write to whoever you feel comfortable. Send a couple. Send to different people. Use the shotgun approach. Get get them listening to, to pay attention. Um, do the House and also um, do the Senate. Do both sides. Just get them to listen to you. Once you've done that, then the next steps are, because we have a lot of people that have already done this. If you've already done this or after you do this within a month, then you need to, on an ongoing basis, keep telling them your concerns. Keep telling them, hey, I sent you a note. Because what they should do is they should send you an email address back that you can communicate with. It might be an aid for that representative. It might be um, them themselves. It, it might be somebody they refer you to. It, it, there's an inner working in the government that I couldn't even begin to explain. But if they give you a name, you hold on to that like gold. Then you want to stay on top of this. You want to keep letting them know that this has not – this hasn't been resolved, and, it, and you are still concerned. You can use phrases like, I'm really looking forward to hearing from the point of view of the senator or representative on this. This issue is extremely important to the survival of my lodging business. What are the next steps regarding big tech and Google's impact, i.e., what are you doing for me? Um, you know, in a few months, reservations for summer is going to kick in, and I, I'm, I'm extremely worried. If you're tracking your data, tell them about your PACE reports and how they're down because Google's taking all of the bookings off the OTAs. I mean, what can be done to help business grow when Google wants a piece of every booking I make? Keep it in front of them. Basically, you have to, at least every 30 days, reach out to the person and say, hey, where are you? What have you done for me? Where are we? What's happening? You can't just sign a petition and forget it. You can't just send your initial email and forget it. You have to stay on top of this if we're going to see change, because if we don't stop Google, Google's just going to make it more and more difficult for you to sell anything without them making money. So between this date, which was January 7th, and January or February 13th, we, we, we all know what happened in the government. It was all about the impeachment trials, which are now gone. It is time to go back out and refocus your representatives and your senators focus on this concern. It's like anybody else. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. What bubbles to the top gets attention. You have to use your voice. You have to share this information. So if you are not keeping up with what's happening, please do. Um, BookDirect.Education sends out hints and tips on ways to work with your guests, hints and tips on if something happens with one of the OTAs like uh, Expedia just changed their contract, so anybody who signed it after January 1st, you might want to go read that one. They changed a lot of things. 
and tightened down the screws. So you got to know what you can and cannot do when you sign up with them. Um, we're putting all this out here for you. And um, this is being done by ACORN through Pi and AIHP. It's a, it's a kind of a coalition of all of us because we need our industry to survive. So we need to know what you know because some of you may have done this, but I don't know what happened. I didn't, I didn't get the end of the story. So in order for us to keep this issue front and center, I need to know what you know. So back to you don't know what you don't know. Well, I need to know what I don't know. I need to know what you know. So if you've reached out to somebody, will you please email and let us know that? I'll give you the emails here in a second. Annie will pop them in the chat box. If you or your state local organization has been working diligently and you have contacts and there is direction and there's asking you for things, please let us know because I go, I give Allison the list of what I know and she gives us direction and advice and she keeps it. I mean, I imagine on her wall, she has like this, this big chart of who did what where, kind of like in CSI, because we have to track what's happening in the government. And if we're getting a little traction somewhere, we're going to do all we can to keep pushing that traction. And this is point in case. Um, Patricia Widmeyer, who is the president of the Michigan Bed and Breakfast Association, she owns the Glen Arbor B&B, she's been working with her U.S. House representatives in northern Michigan, and they forwarded to the Department of Justice a letter from the group representing her group of ins. Now, I know Patricia had a, he uh, a meeting with one of the aides, and she and I walked through that PDF of all the things Google is not doing for us anymore that they took away. So she had that data to take to speak to the, the um, contact she had. Um, and then she also had Allison supporting her. So if you are getting a toehold, if you're getting a foot in the door, tell us so we can help you and we can keep track of who's doing what because it's almost impossible to figure it out any other way. you got to tell us. Now, I'm pretty excited about this. Sandy White, who's the marketing director of the Michigan Bed and Breakfast Association, has done an excellent job trying to get press. She does this really well. And she has been able to introduce Patricia and Rob and Chris and myself to a, um, a newspaper person, a writer for NPR. And I have a meeting scheduled with the writer. And you know what I'm going to tell her. It's everything I just told you and probably more. I, anywhere we can get our, our, our message out there, we're going to do it. And if you get a toehold like this, we have people they can interview so that they can get the story. They can interview you. They can interview people in your association. So we're, I, I, we're darn excited about the NPR one. I'm hoping this one will get some presence out there, get people learning and understanding what's happening. So keep us in the know. Email me at Lisa at Acorn. Email Rob at um, my AIHP and Chris at Pi for now. We'll, I'm sure they will get all their emails organized under the new ALP heading. But for the moment, use their emails. Tell us all at the same time, and we will get you whatever help you need to help us support the industry. So I know we ran a little bit over here, um, but Janice, let's take some questions. Annie, do we have any questions? Yes. Uh... Teresa says, glad to see you have compared other businesses, noticed all this, but not feeling empowered. Um, let's see here. Uh, we had a comment from somebody that had to leave the webinar, but said they were going to watch this again because they, they felt a little confused with it. Um, does it make sense if you already wrote to your representatives, would it make sense to go back now and send them the changes PDF? Absolutely. And that one article that is out there from February, let me get it for you, uh, this one, January 7th. This is the article where Allison gave you some language to go back to your contact with and tell us who your contact is. Email us so we can keep track of all these people. Um, we're hoping Allison gets invited to speak in front of the Senate too. That's where we're pushing for. We want both sides of the government to see what's going on. but. Yes, tell us who you're working with, and then go back to them, send them the PDF, and then ask them one of these questions like, hey, where are we? <laughs> What's the next step? What, what are you guys doing for us? I mean, ask them, and then keep on them. Don't let this, this topic die, because there's lots of other things out there. 
actually one of my innkeepers and I could have I could have put this out there. I don't even know if they were a client or not, but they sent it to me. And that Bernie Sanders was their representative. And Bernie wrote back, or one of his aides did, and basically said, um, "There's the 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 scam the, the the there's a scam act out there for for um, booking scam act. It doesn't really fall." This isn't in that act, but it's still a, le- a foot in the door for those people who are working on that act to hear what we're concerned about, too. I don't know if they can expand it or add another one, but Bernie said, hey, this is kind of all already underway. Go to this person. So any of that information, if we could just gather it up and know what's going on, yes, keep writing to them. Please keep writing to them. Okay, Annie, more questions. Uh, here's another question, um, and this is our last question, guys. So if you have any more, go ahead and type them in. Does consumer protection have any teeth? I don't know. I will ask Allison Cavaretta that. All right, and, that was our oh, final question. Oh, I also question. wanted to uh, throw out there, too, um, ALP is also working with AHNLA, the Association for Hotel and Lodging Group, on this topic. I mean, there is, you might feel like you're alone, but don't. You just need to realize that there are a lot of people that are, there's just not one path to success here. There's like millions of paths to success because that's the way our government runs. But you're not alone. And don't, don't feel like that oh, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to even bother. Please bother. Do this. Please help us. Um, Because honestly, I've been at this for almost 20 years in ACORN. And it is the last four or five years have been pretty disappointing in the ability in which I, as a provider, can help because Google won't let me. I can't do it. And my innkeepers are, some of them are little. They can't afford to pay all this money. So if we do not find a way to get Google to back down, to back off, to be stopped, I am afraid our industry is at peril. We have to do something. And it's not just a case of, oh, I'll just pay more to get bookings. That works for people with big properties. It doesn't work for the little guys. And that's, that's, that, that's what in-keeping was when B&B started years ago. So, all right, Tannis, I'm handing it back to you. And if you're talking, we can't hear you. Fantastic. <laughs> yep. I've got, um, there were a few more questions that came in. And um, as we're over time, we'll get back with um, each of the folks individually who had questions that we didn't get a chance um, to get to. Also, a reminder that we will be sending a recording of the webinar uh, to everyone who registered. So you can go back and uh, listen to it uh, again. And I definitely... Um, would encourage you on B&B Finder, if you go under the innkeeper section, there's a tab there that says events. And that's where we're listing all of the upcoming webinars and conferences that we're attending. And um, we cannot thank Lisa enough for kicking off this series. I think it's the perfect start to our ongoing educational series that we are going to provide to all of our members and innkeepers in the industry. So thank you, Lisa, and thank you, Annie, for your time today, and thank you to everyone uh, who joined us. And we look forward to seeing you all soon and speaking with you soon as well. So have a great afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.